All right, so today we're going to learn how to tune the guitar to an open chord that is from the harmonic series. And in fact, it is the most basic chord that the harmonic series is ringing out. So it's just going to be an open chord. This isn't really for playing other than maybe big hits that are, you know, in drone type of things, because there's not much else you could do except hit this perfectly tuned open chord. But the purpose is not so much for what you can do playing with it, it's so you can hear what a really in tune chord sounds like, because we don't have that in Western music. I could really use your help to grow this channel. Between my full-time job as an ER nurse and being a husband and father of two kids, it's very hard for me to find the time to make content for this channel. For those of you who are really getting a lot out of my lessons, here is how you can help me out. The very best way you can help me is to subscribe to my Patreon music school called High Castle Conservatory. I want to take a minute to explain this diagram that I came up with here to, uh, you know, make this lesson a little bit easier for you to understand. So, obviously we have a guitar here. This is the lowest string here. This is the highest string here. We're going to tune our guitar down. So instead of this being an E string, it's going to be a C. Instead of this being an A string, we're going to tune it down to G. Instead of this being a D string, we're going to tune it down to C. This is a G string like it normally is. Uh, instead of this being a B string, we're going to tune it to B flat. This is also an E string like normal. Up here we see the fret number. So this is the 12th fret on a guitar. And everything we're hitting here is going to be either open strings, which are represented when I point here. That's an open string. Everything else is going to be a harmonic, which means we lightly touch on top of the fret. There's a node that's ringing out just at that special spot. So here's the 12th fret. Here's the seventh fret all the way down this line, fifth fret all the way down this line, fourth fret. We also see down here the actual harmonic. So if this is the first harmonic, the twelfth fret is the second harmonic, it's an octave up. Perfect fifth is the third harmonic. Another octave of the two is the fourth harmonic. So this is the actual harmonics. This is literally just the frets up here. We see here we're tuning it to this big open dominant chord, but that is tuned differently. You can see down here than equal temperament. It's uh, drastically. This dominant seven is 31 cents flat. The E is 14 cents flat. And this is naturally coming out of the string. So you see the diamond shape is the guitar harmonic. Uh, the, the circles over here are the absolute harmonic, and, and what I mean by absolute was is you can divide any harmonic by two, and if it's able to be divided by two, it's just an octave lower than that note. So we always want to reduce things. Uh, six would become three, and you couldn't divide it anymore. Uh, ten would become five, because ten divided by two is five. Uh, so that's the, the absolute harmonic over here. You can see that the C is the first harmonic, the G is the third harmonic. The C is the second harmonic, which is actually just an octave of one. The G is six. But over here, you have the actual harmonic, and you can see that the harmonics go two, three, four, six, seven, ten. But we don't need to get too much into that. I just want you to understand this is the lowest string, this is the highest string, and this is the tuning we're going to do. And these are the deviations to equal temperament that we're going to make to the tuning. But we're actually just going to tune by hitting harmonics after we tune these two C strings to the tuner. So we're going to tune everything else to harmonics. And that's how we're going to get a perfectly in tune dominant seven chord, which we rarely, if ever, we never hear this chord in popular music, and it's the most powerful chord in the entire universe. So once again, this is the fret numbers. This is the lowest string. If I hit an open string, I'll be over here. The 12th fret is up there, 7th fret, 5th fret, 4th fret. This is the harmonics. You can see this uh, harmonic number on the triangles. So the first harmonic is the open string. The second harmonic is the 12th fret. The third harmonic is the 7th fret. The fourth harmonic is the 5th fret. And the fifth harmonic is just shy of the 4th fret, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to be pointing the whole time so you should be able to follow along on your guitar and tune your guitar to a perfectly tuned dominant seventh chord, which is never heard and is literally ringing out of every note that has ever existed. So anyway, I got a tuner on my phone. I'm going to tune to 440. I don't really like 440, but I know most of you are in it. And we're going to tune this guitar to a drop C. So all I want you to do right now is in... A equals 440, tune your C, uh, tune your lowest string, which would be E, to a C. And then I want you, um, the D string, which is not the next string up, but it's the one after, is going to be an octave of that. So that will also be C. 
see a harmonic series rings a one and then two so the octave is, is known as two and three is what we call the perfect fifth so we're going to tune this a string to that perfect fifth which will be g but i don't really want to tune any of those yet because i want to just tune those to these these c's so just go ahead and tune your guitar to low c and then the d string also to a c So when a note rings, there's actually an infinite number of notes ringing, but what's especially ringing is the note as a whole, the note as a half, which is why there's harmonics in these special places. If I were to move my finger, sorry, I'm gonna, just the littlest bit, the harmonic doesn't ring. So exactly at the halfway point, and this divides the string in two, and that's an octave. So if, we have, if this is now C, remember we tune this down to C? If that's C, this is C. This is the first harmonic, the second harmonic. Now the third harmonic can be achieved by going, dividing the string in three in either direction. See, it's this exact same note. It's because it divides the string in three pieces. And that's what we call a perfect fifth in Western music, but we can see it's actually the third harmonic or the, the string being divided in three. So we're going through the harmonics real quick so we can see where they are. So we have C, which is our, our one or our principal, and then two is the octave, and then three is that perfect fifth. So we're gonna tune this A string to that perfect fifth. So the way we're gonna do that is find the perfect fifth on this low string. There's the octave, there's that third harmonic, which is the perfect fifth. So I want you to tune this string to the, the third harmonic, which is this note, and then to put it in the right octave, we'll go to the 12th fret, 7th fret on the lowest string, and then the 12th fret on the A string should be in tune. So I'm going to tune like that, not with this tuner, because this tuner is going to tune us to equal temperament, which is a compromised tuning that allows things like a piano or a guitar to play in 12 keys and be equally out of tune in all of them. But the effect it has is we get kind of accustomed to that sound as being out of tune. It's, it's not really out of tune to us, we're so used to it. But the real tunings are coming from these string divisions. So anyway, we're gonna tune this A string to a G, or the perfect fifth, which is from the third harmonic. So here, seventh fret, and we line that up to the 12th fret. It's pretty close. This third harmonic is two cents sharp in the harmonic series. So if you know what cents are, about 12 cents is where the average ear can start hearing a deviation in pitch. So two cents is very good. Let's remember that uh, most people are doing vibrato. They're, they're, they're not right on a note. So two cents of accuracy is incredibly good. That's why this, uh, that's why equal temperament works so well is because the perfect fifth is only two cents off. So what is the, Fourth harmonic, well, it's a double. Anything that can be doubled is the same note. So if one was C, and then two was C, that means if we double two, we get four, and that's C. So we get the third harmonic there, and then the fourth harmonic divides the string in four. There it is, you hear it's the same C again. And these harmonics, so what's actually happening on the string is the string's ringing as a whole, it's ringing as a half, it's ringing as thirds. These harmonics are nodes of vibration, so they're all ringing. We think we're just hearing boom, the low note, but we're actually hearing all those notes ringing inside of there, and you can see them on an oscilloscope. Uh, it's kind of a miracle that our ear only hears one because it's a very complex um, you know, harmony going on, actually. So, so far we have... Uh, one, then the octave, C, then the perfect fifth, which is the third harmonic, G, and fourth is a double of C, because it's a double of two. Fifth harmonic, you can't half it or double it, so it's a new note. It's a major third that is 14 cents flat. So how do I know it's 14 cents flat? Well, you would have to do the logarithm. You would have to do the equation of how you convert ratios to cents, but uh, I'll save you some time. If you know what a major third is, it's the happy note or the note of beauty. So remember I told you about 12 cents is where the average Joe can hear a different note? 
Our major third, which is the note of beauty, is considerably sharp, but this harmonic series is ringing out the correct one. And take, take notice that it's not right on this fourth harmonic, it's 14 cents flat of it. You can start to hear it ring if I move. So if I'm right on the fret, it's not ringing correctly. So I go a little flat, because remember, it's a little flat, and there it is ringing. So we have one, the octave, which is two, third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, and it's that major third. Now a sixth harmonic is a double of three. Remember, any double is an octave, so we have G again. So one is C, two is C, it's an octave, three is G, four is another octave of C, then five is E, it's a major third, that's 14 cents flat, and then six, Six is a double of three. And finally, as far as we're going to get today, is seven. It's a, do, it's a minor seven that is 31 cents flat is the correct tuning. So in equal temperament, our dominant seven note, or our minor seven, is 31 cents sharp. And remember, 12 cents is, is a pretty big amount. 31 cents. It, it's literally a note we don't have. It's more of an in-between. It's closer to a microtone. So anyway, we are going to tune the guitar to just those notes. C, uh, G, E, B flat that are all tuned correctly. So once again, let's make sure our C's are in tune. Line drifted a little flat. So I'm going to tune just from that. I'm going to tune just from that C. So we have so, so this fourth fret of the low C should match the twelfth fret of the C on the fourth string. It's pretty close. Now to find that um, G, we're going to do it through this low string. There it is, on the seventh fret, I just tap the harmonic and that's the perfect fifth or the third harmonic. Now we're gonna tune the twelfth fret to that. Pretty close. Now this D string, we already know is a, sorry, the D string is tuned down to C. So we have C, G, C, the power chord. No definition of minor or major. The next string is naturally a G on the guitar. Let's leave it a G so we have one big power chord in octaves. So now we're going to tune this by going to this and tune that to the open string. So See how we're tuning everything from this string, which means we're not going to do the out of tune compromise of equal temperament. We're actually just going to tune to the string correctly. So, so far, we're just in ones and perfect fifths, which are only two cents off in the harmonic series, which is very good and too close for most people to even notice a difference at all. Pretty cool so far. That's just the power chord. Now, the way the guitar is laid out, we need to reverse the 7 and the 5. I would like to do the 5 next, but it's this string is a B string, so it's closer to B flat. I don't want to break it or tune it too low. So we'll do the, the dominant 7 note, which is 31 cents flat in the harmonic series, on this B string, and then we'll do the E on the E string. So now we're going to tune those also from these strings. So I'm going to go up to this C string here, and I'm going to try to find the major third or the fifth harmonic. It's a little bit left of the fourth fret because it's a... So I need this note. It's a, like a harmonic just left of the fourth fret on the D string to match to the twelfth fret of the E string. So on the D string, a little bit left of the fourth harmonic, you'll find the major third and make the 12th fret harmonic of the highest string match that. It's hard.
Okay, pretty close. We're gonna tune this B string to B flat, also from the harmonic series. So I have to find the seventh harmonic on the D string. There's the second harmonic, third harmonic, and I'm, I'm just lightly pressing the string over the harmonics. I'm not pressing the string down. One, two, we need to find seven. Three, four is another double of one. Now here's that major third, which is the fifth harmonic. Now a six will be a double of a three. Now finally that's seven. There it is. Now what I have to do to match the octave of that is go to this B string and hit the harmonic on the fourth fret and tune it to that. Right here. That harmonic there. So this one on the D string has to match. And that's going to give us that minor seven that's 31 cents flat. It's literally a note that does not exist in Western music. And you guys are going to actually think it's weird because we just don't have the note. But you're going to see why our dominant chords are so tense. If you know Western music, dominant chords are pretty much our source of tension. And it helps. Um, they have a very particular use. But dominant's not supposed to be so tense. The seven is, that, that's from the harmonic series is, is an unbelievable note that... Uh, most of us just don't hear unless a singer hits something out of tune or a guitar player bends or a violinist hits something microtonal. This mm -hmm. is the, the harmonic series is ringing out a dominant seven chord, but with the major third 14 cents flat and the dominant seven 31 cents flat. The perfect fifths are very close within two cents. And of course, octaves are always in perfect tune because they're just a double. So anyway, let's go through that tuning one more time. So if we're going to do the perfect fifth again. Let's tune that one more time. Let's tune one more time. That's good. Now octave. C to C. Right now we're going to go to the G string again, so we're going to hit this and open G. That's close. All right, now we're going to go skip a string and go to the high E, but we're going to find it from the fifth harmonic on this D string. Remember, we could use either D string, but sometimes on this higher one, it just makes it a little easier to hear. So one, two three, four. That note's got to match the 12th fret harmonic on the highest string. Pretty close. And now uh, to find the B flat, we have to find the 7th harmonic on the D string. Or the C, whatever. We, the D string, but we're doing a C on it. It's confusing, I know. There's that 7th harmonic. Line that up to the 4th fret harmonic on the B string. Let's hear what this chord sounds like. That is the dominant seven chord that is ringing out of the universe. It's ringing out of literally every note that's played in music. It's this one. Now you can hear the geometry. In a minute, I'm gonna tune back to equal temperament and you're gonna hear how the notes do not resonate in the same way because these are simple ratios. One to two. That's a three, a double of three, six, then the seven, and then the five, fifth harmonic. So those are just the ratios. Uh, in equal temperament, it's very um, obscure ratios because the whole tuning system is a compromise of dividing an octave into 12 equal parts. And that's not how a string is naturally divided by the laws of nature, which are present on it with those harmonics. So if you're on an electric guitar, listen, just hear, hit it loud and just feel the, the geometry lock in of those harmonies. This does not exist in, in Western music. If you're on an acoustic, put your ear all over it. Listen to the vibration. Feel it against your body.
There's not much you can do with this for playing. You can hit harmonics, or you can do bar chords. It, this is not about something to play with. I'm sure something, something, someone could come up with something cool, but it's not a lot of chords would be in tune because of all those tuning deviations. And now you can see why they do equal temperament, so you can easily play in different keys and not have to worry about these tuning problems. But. This is something I just want you to listen to and hear. Hear what this major third. That's flatter than an equal temperament. An equal temperament one's just a little tense. And then this dominant seven is outrageous. It's 31 cents flat in the harmonic series. And you can demonstrate the note. Right there. That is 31 cents there's that major third on top. So now I'm going to tune it back to equal temperament and toggle between them a little bit for you. So here again is tuned to the harmonic series. You can hear the geometry one more time. Okay. Now I'm going to tune really quickly these notes that I had painstakingly tuned to the right notes of the harmonic series based on the string back to equal temperament. So the E becomes sharper and the B becomes way sharper, or the B flat, sorry. I'm just going to leave the perfect fifth since they were two cents off, I'm going to leave them where they were. So it's really just adjusting this dominant seven note and the major third back to equal temperament. I'll just tune it all to equal temperament real quick. And then we can toggle back and forth. Alright, so now here is the dominant chord we would get in our system. And this is that dominant chord that is so common in jazz and blues and has a tense sound that wants to resolve. Unlike that really sort of cosmic sounding dominant chord that the harmonic series had. So listen to all this tension. And this chord might sound more familiar to you because we hear it in all of our in all of Western music has dominant chords all over and it's the tense one, not the harmonic series one. So it sounds like this. You hear how that's more like blues, right? Because that tension of that dominant seven and that major third being sharp. Ugh. But it is something we're more used to. So let's hear equal tempered. Now let's hear a harmonic series open tuning. Now let's hear equal tempered. And then harmonic series open tuning. Now let's hear equal tempered. And then harmonic series open tuning. So hopefully you all can play around with that. And I just want you guys to get your ears used to that there's other tunings other than the ones we're, you know, that's been beat into our heads. And they're actually a lot more harmonious than what we use. What we use is a it has a flexibility to go to different keys and, and as a composer that's very convenient because if everyone had to retune their instruments every key you would never get anything done so the equal temperament is a fantastic tool to to cover a lot of harmonic ground but nobody's in tune so this is just showing you guys what in tune really is <laughs> hear the geometry. Thanks a lot for watching this video and taking an interest in my channel. Please help me reach a larger audience by hitting subscribe below and ringing the notification bell. Check out my video playlist page to find the categories that most interest you. Leave me a super thanks here on YouTube and even better, come join my Patreon. Please consider buying music for my original projects ISS and High Castle Tele Orchestra. Also, don't forget to sign up for my email list on the front page of timsmolens.com. You can find information about all of those things in the description below. Thanks again.